Welcome to IAYTD, and this week we're tackling one of the biggest esports in existence, Dota 2. To give you context, though, we need to back up. It all began with Warcraft 3, which was a real-time strategy game released for PCs way back in 2002. It was possible to create mods for the game, which meant they could change the way the game was played or the way the game looked, and one of these mods was called Defense of the Ancients, or shortened to Dota. If you're familiar with Warcraft, it is very much about gathering resources and building up armies. This mod, however, shifted the focus to particular heroes that were immensely powerful, and removed the resource gathering component almost completely. This mod eventually grew to over 100 unique heroes and players could compete in 5 vs 5 matches. This mod had a huge impact on the world of gaming as we know it, catapulting the entire genre known as MOBA which stands for Massive Online Battle Arena. One designer of the original mod, Steve Feek, went on to design League of Legends, while another designer called Ice Frog went to create a sequel to the mod, a completely fleshed out independent game called Dota 2. Interestingly, before we move on, there's a third credited creator of Dota known simply as Yule, and it's really unclear where he went after this, though it seems to be the popular consensus that he's out of the game completely though there are rumors of all sorts. Ice Frog went to work for Valve, who was already a heavy hitter in the games industry for the much-loved franchises Half-Life and Counter-Strike, and for creating one of the biggest innovations in PC gaming, Steam, which is a platform for buying, playing, and creating community within PC games. Even though Blizzard, the company behind Warcraft 3, claimed to have ownership of the Dota trademark, Valve eventually won the right to use Dota commercially, and they launched the sequel, which is a standalone game created from scratch. Let's back up and clarify what happens in this game. Like I said, you control a certain hero, one character with a certain set of skills. You've got four teammates, each with their own characters, versus another team of five. You each have an Ancient, which is a building of some sort that you need to protect. So your mission is to find a path across the map, defeat the opposing team, and destroy their Ancient. There's really only one map, potentially with different skins and some different aesthetics. Why? The characters are especially balanced and created just for this map, to keep the game competitive and fine-tuned. The map has three lanes that all lead to the Ancient, and the team must strategize about what players go which route and in what combinations. Alongside the heroes, you'll also see computer-controlled creeps, which either fight for one of the two sides, or they're potentially neutral and will give players gold or other rewards if they're killed. So even though there's only one map, the key is that every match is different. What character you choose, how you choose to play, and how your encounters with other characters play out. Maybe you choose to run up the lane with your creeps, or maybe you venture into the jungle between the lanes and focus on taking out these neutral creeps in exchange for money and experience. Each game is vastly different. Dota 2 as a sequel got universally great scores across most websites, taking what was great about the original and making improvements to the things that didn't work. The core concept was the same though. Three lanes, unique heroes, extremely competitive play. Let's take a second to talk about competition. With the original Dota, the game had spawned an international competition scene. With Dota 2, that became even more so. In total, over $65 million has been distributed to winners in Dota 2 tournaments. The highest amount of any esport, and twice the amount that League of Legends has distributed. Dota 2's largest tournament, the International Dota 2 Championships, occurs every summer in Seattle, and the 2016 total pool of winnings to be distributed was a record-breaking $20 million for this event alone. Smaller tournaments happen seasonally, called Majors, which are capped at a $3 million pool. Dota 2 is also pushing the boundaries of what augmented and virtual reality can do. At the International Championships, the characters were displayed in a vivid augmented reality before a match appearing like they were standing there in the arena. There are also ways now to spectate a match in virtual reality. Traveling over the battlefield and watching from afar, or diving down into the fray and watching the fights up close. There were already tons of spectators for Dota 2, but options like this, like watching in VR, may give this eSport another bump. That is just a taste of the worldwide phenomenon that is Dota 2. If you're interested, it's completely free to play Dota 2, assuming you have a decent enough computer to run it. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next week.